Hey everybody, welcome back to The Layout. Uh, just a real quick update on what I've been working on. This is the Mrs. Akoya bridge scene on my railroad, and this is based on a prototype scene, obviously, on the Central Vermont's Richard branch, like most of the stuff on this layout. And what I'm using to build this bridge is a Central Valley uh, bridge kit. They're um, 150-foot HO scale Pratt Truss bridge. That's this. this has been somewhat of a struggle. Uh, I've come up with some tips and techniques if you have to build a bridge like this that I'm going to share with you here real quick. Uh, when you take the parts out of the box, the first thing you're going to find is that you have a bunch of flat uh, sprues, are relatively flat. Each of these girders are, I hope you can see it here, they're two, they're basically angles. The instructions will describe the configuration of the girders, but basically there's one that is the, the flat plate here with a cross hatch piece on the opposite side of the flat plate. There's one that is two cross hatch pieces that are joined together to make a to make a girder, and then there's the smaller girders that are just joined together to make the smaller. Uh, these ultimately become the vertical girders on the bridge. And speaking of removing the parts from the sprue, you you don't want to just twist these off, or you'll end up possibly breaking them or certainly warping them. But what I like to use to remove parts from sprues are these sprue cutters. I got these years ago from a company called PBL. Uh, you can get them, I believe, from Micromark, similar ones. And these are great for getting nice, close, flush cuts on these parts. You just stick them in here. Just cut one side. Cut the second side, and the piece pops right out. And you can get really, really close to the edge, as you can see here. And then you can go ahead and clean this up, clean this part. And here's a view of what the piece looks like after it's removed from the sprue. And then when you join the two pieces together, you end up with a piece that looks like this. You have to make sure that the parts are somewhat consistently the same size. It's easy for the pieces to slip out of square a little bit, and then you'll have girders that are not the same size, and that can cause you some trouble later. Once you've glued up all the girder components to make the bridge, you're going to have to cut them to size. And for that, you're going to need two things. The first thing you're going to need is you need to know what size to cut them to. And for that, there is a template of half of one side of the girder included in the kit instructions. And what I've done with it here is just uh, use some 3M spray adhesive and stuck it on a piece of gator board. Now, the reason I used gator board is that so I could put some pins in it to hold the pieces in place and in alignment when I go to glue the pieces up. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute. The other thing this does is show you the angles you have to cut on this. So the rough cuts, after you've formed up the girders like this, I lay them on top of the template here in the right configuration. And then I take the razor, a razor saw and just start a cut in roughly the right angle. And I line, you see these broad, uh, very bold lines here. Just line up along there on the rough angle. And then I just start a cut there put it off to the side and saw all the way down through it. Another tip you can use is to take a small square like this and use it as a brace against your saw to hold the saw straight. The saw blade vertical, so you're making a true vertical cut and the saw's not drifting off on you. And here you can see my cut. Now the, the diagram requires that this cut is 20 degrees. And I tried to line it up by eye, and in several cases I would line it up by eye, and then when I put the two pieces together, it would just be just a little out of square. I couldn't get one side to stay perfectly true or vertical, and the other side, the angle was off, and there'd be a gap. Then I remembered I had one of these ultimation sanders. I'm not quite sure how to say it, but I got it from uh, handlaidtrack.com, which is also known as Fast Tracks. And this is kind of an elaborate tool for this. I uh, wouldn't run out and buy this just to build this bridge kit, but it turned out to be a real lifesaver. And one of the best parts about this tool is angle. this one lets you do it in stepped increments of one degree. So what you do is just turn this knob here and then you set your gate, uh, your guide to the angle you need. And in this case, it's a 20 degree angle. So I set it to 70 on my reader here clamp down on it, and then I put my rough cut piece in here, line it up the right way, and then I'm going to spin this around so you can see it, that my rough cut was just a little off, 
But then just by using this thing, this hand sander, whoops, it's spinning on me because I'm trying to do three things at once here. You can see how it gradually sands in and we end up with a nice precise 20 degree angle. Now when we line that up on our template, it lines up perfectly. That's one tip I can certainly offer you here is to make sure you have some way to get precise angles into the girder pieces when you're assembling the side track. After all these girders were cut to length, what I did was I just laid them on top of the template, making sure to align the vertical pieces, which is the CC girder, C-C girder in the instructions. And I lined the end right down here up where it needed to go. And then I used just ordinary straight T-pins stuck into the gator board to hold the pieces in alignment. And it just takes a few of them to do that. You do one at the end so it doesn't shift left or right. One there. And then once I can grab this thing, <laughs> one on the opposite side. And then I was ready to just glue the girders together. Uh, there was There's two spots where you have to cut different girders to length and splice them in here. And that, of course, the true sander or the ultimation sander was excellent for. I was able to rough mark it slightly long, uh, set it to 90 degrees and just sand it down to the right length and drop it right in place. The next step after you do that is to add these little, I don't know if you'll be able to see these. These are little just plates of with uh, rivet detail on them. And you put those over the various locations where they are spliced together. Uh, there's several locations for those along the length of the girder and uh, there's other ones that just fill in that are just for appearance's sake but they're not actually holding a splice together once this is glued together then you just take these out and then what you would do is what i did is i just flipped it over and reassembled the other end of the girder and that in the end created the entire side girder assembly here i have the uh, two side trusses I've started assembling them by putting these cross braces across the top. Of course, one of the things you have to do is to make sure that these are spaced correctly. The idea behind the bridge is that you have the DAC where the, where the track is actually sitting, and that's over on the layout right now. Uh, and then you have the truss assembly that you can put on top of it, and that is so that you can get access to the track if you had to clean it or realign it or do something to it. And so you don't really want to permanently glue the truss assembly to the deck. Uh, at least that's the idea moving forward. But obviously there's pieces on the, on the deck that come up here. There's vertical uh, extensions from the deck side, br side braces that come up here that need to align with these verticals right here. And then the verticals need to align with these cross pieces. So all this really needs to be assembled on, these template, on this template. Uh, what I was finding is as I was doing this, this thing seemed really, really flimsy. I have noticed that as you start putting things like these cross braces on, the, the bridge gets a little more uh, rigid and easy to handle. This next tip is actually in the instructions, and that is to cut a piece of uh, scrap material. I've just got a piece of basswood here uh, that's cut to 2 and 11 30 seconds in width, and that is a width that fits ideally between the two girders. It's a spacer for the girders so that it holds it rigid while you're trying to assemble these cross pieces up here. And the way to do that is to take this two girders on here, or two cross members on here. There's one more that goes on here. So here I've got the cross member lined up here. This is the cross member I need to add across here. And then I'm going to put my spacer in place. I have that in place. And I'm going to just line this up to make sure that it's as close to aligned correctly as I can get it. One thing I have found is that although I was using this, to me, uh, uh, extra thin cement to assemble most of the parts on the bridge, uh, these cross pieces don't like that very much. They don't seem to hold very well. So what I've been using for this particular part application here is just Loctite super glue. And I'll just, sorry if this is off camera, I'm just gonna put some glue on here. Got the glue on here and then using one of my four hands, try to get it at a right angle. And for that, I have a small little square. That's what this is for. 
you really need really long skinny fingers to do this. And that holds it just roughly square. And you verify that you're lined up on the side here. And then a quick shot of accelerant. And hopefully we have a good joint, and we do. And we do that on the other side. Oops, that popped just a little bit. It probably didn't have enough super glue on it. Or CA, Loctite super glue. There's also CA. You see that in the ACC, CA, and super glue are all the same thing. We used to get that question at the magazine all the time. So what's the difference between CA and ACC? The difference is one letter. There. Now we have those three cross members in place, and this thing's getting a little more rigid. Well, that's a few tips I've come up with as I've been building these Central Valley Bridge kits. They're not bad kits. I don't mean to make it sound like they're terrible kits, but they are not beginner kits. One of their chief advantages is the components for these can be used to build all kinds of bridge configurations, which are not necessarily the ones that are on the label or on the instructions. So a uh, little bit more to go on this project, but in the meantime, I just wanted to share some tips with you on what I found as I've built through this, uh, or been building this Central Valley Bridge Kit. Anyway, take care, have a great day, and thanks for watching.